On this episode of CPR Ford Garage, we're going to show you how to shorten a bump side Ford the right way. Mostly. Guaranteed at least 95.6% correct way. Look at this. This junk looks like a truck again. Okay, what we've got here is this chunk of the frame relatively clean on both outsides. So that is the area between the cab mounts, the rear cab mount, and the leaf spring cross member. You can see after this little bend and dip right here, it is pretty straight. There's a little hump right here but this chunk right here is completely straight and level. So that is where we will remove the long bed length and splice these guys back together. Just gotta do a little cleanup and stuff on the floor, touch more on here and we'll be ready to mark out cut lines. Okay, as you can see here, we've got the frame very, very clean. Lots of flap disc, wire brush, uh, scotch bright pad with some simple green, Clean enough to eat off of, hopefully. There was a lot of scale on there, it was pretty disgusting. 60 years or so worth of scust on there. So, what we have for measuring, we've got big square, little square, and an adjustable T-square, and a Sharpie. Check out 330 Garages video on YouTube about doing the shortening. I'm doing 98% of what he did. A few things I'm going to do differently. His seemed to work out, and I'm not quite sure why. And maybe I'll find out after I cut this, but oh well. We have plenty of welding wire on the spool. Um, so what we're wanting to do here is a, a Z cut. So that way we have two pieces left of the chopped frame that overlap each other. Uh, probably totally unnecessary. You're probably just fine to whack it off right there and then whack it off 16 inches down, butt it together and weld it with a, a piece of C channel on the inside for a sleeve. Um, that's how they do limos and stuff like that, I believe, and other um, OEM vehicles that I've seen lengthened or shortened or whatever. But it doesn't hurt anything to do it this way for sure, and it's a stronger joint. I always try to make sure there's something besides just the weld supporting the weight on my joint. So I totally copied 330 Garage, but two things I'm going to do different than he did. One is, so the frame rail is six inches tall. And as you can see right here, it kicks down right there. So the center of this frame rail is three inches, okay? So three inches down right here is center. Here the frame is like six and a half inches or whatever, six and a quarter, so it's wider. So the center point would be in a different spot. But what I'm doing is truing everything up off of the top of the frame rail because 
That is what has to be flat and true to each other and to the world. You can see from my magnetic angle finder, it is sitting at zero degrees level right now. Um, and that's just with the chassis setting on the wheels and tires that were on it. I did check tire pressure to make sure they're all the same. Um, so I'm doing everything true to the top, okay? So right here, I measured down from the top three inches to find center. And right here, I measured down from the top three inches to find center. And I'm going to see how that works out. 330 Garage didn't seem to have any problems with the way he did it. Um, his line here would be a little lower down because he centered it up off of this point and this point. Um, I find that with my line through here, you can see this hole right here and this hole right here, my line bisects those holes perfectly. So those holes are in the center of the frame in relation to the top. So that's how I'm going to do it. The other thing I'm doing is you can see right here, 16 and a quarter. Everybody does 16 inches when they shorten these trucks, but if you look at the factory chassis diagrams, everybody does 16 inches in the front, 4 inches in the back. And if you watch my bed, ep my bed shortening episode, um, the difference in the Ford factory trucks was actually about 16.2 and 3.8, or you know, rounding it to measurements that make sense on a tape measure, 16 and a quarter in the front, three and three quarter in the back. So that's how I'm gonna do it. I know, I just have to be different. So those are the two things I'm doing different. Measuring all my center line measurement where it bisects from the top, and I'm taking out 16 and a quarter inches. So I did do as he did though. The oval hole right here in the top of the bed is the front bed mount. I measured three quarters of an inch from the back of that hole, and that is this line. So it's three quarters of an inch back from that back of that oval hole. Three quarters back makes that line, okay? He said 21 inches back this way is what he did. Now, I'm cutting out 16 and a quarter, so I went 21 and a quarter inches back this way. It should still end up the same as what he did, other than it'll be a quarter inch shorter. Um, so that leaves me with a five inch chunk here and a five inch chunk here that should but right together and overlap so I can get a nice Z. So you can see I've got five inch piece here staying. So the hump in the frame won't cause me any issues that way because it'll stay there. And this is where it'll join. And then I'm taking out 16 and a quarter inches here on the bottom half. On the top half, this five inch piece is staying and I'm taking out 16 and a quarter inches here. So I've got that side all marked out. I am going to mark out the other side and then we're gonna get to snipping. We're gonna get to getting. Okay, here we are, all set up before the last final check and the chopping. So I've got jack stands under the frame there. I'm betting that the back half is going to tip up because of the bumper and junk on the back. So I've got a jack loosely under the bumper there. Both sides are marked out and hopefully idiot proof. I have what's marked to keep and what with all the squiggly lines that is going away and they transfer around the bottom. And here is the other side. We're going to do one more double check and then we're going to get to cutting and the point of no return. Hopefully that helps you if you're thinking about doing this. The other thing I did before all the cleaning was remove everything from the frame rail. The only thing on this side was an exhaust bracket, a factory one, so e-brake cables are out, drive shaft is out. I've just got the e-brake cables shoved back there. Took the brake line apart at the junction, just folded that forward, bent the other part of it back. I'm going to have to redo brake lines anyway. Um, unhooked all the wires and just laid them back there for now so they're all out of the way. So we've got two totally just bare ready frame rails after we knocked about 60 pounds of rust and scale and dirt out of them. So here we go.
for me with the cutoff wheel, it's easier if I score a line all the way through where I'm going to cut, like eighth of an inch in, and then keep working back and forth on it until it breaks through. It's just easier to get a straight cut with light pressure all the way across than it is just shoving it in and then cutting down all the way through at once. Well, boys and girls, there's the start. I would say there's no going back now, but you can always weld it back together. The going back now is not easy. We'll say that. How about? Oh. Thought it was going to dramatically drop out of there. Well, there you be. So it's going to take a little jack and clamp manipulation to get this all good and right. Maybe some ratchet straps to pull it together too, but you can see we didn't uh, catastrophically screw this up. So that bit is going to be a bit fiddly. I think it's going to involve a little grinding and massaging and pulling and clamping and strapping and getting all ready to be welded so I I am gonna go home and eat some dinner and then I will be back for that okay so we are getting ready to tack the frame together we've got it all positioned I did a lot of fiddling and adjusting off camera to get the joints lined up right the cuts could have been a little better I'm sure that's something everybody runs into. So you can see what we've got going on here. Ratchet strap on each side, plenty of C clamps, and there's a 2x4 clamp to the inside of the frame to use as a guide. Because I had an issue where when I was trying to slide this up to the rest of it, it wanted to kind of go cockeyed. So I clamped 2x4s on the inside of the frame to sort of use as a guide but this side is fit up perfect it's square so we're gonna tack that side and then we're gonna fiddle with clamps and stuff on this side to get the joint fit a little bit better and then we're gonna tack that side so these straps are very taut so you can see this one's fitting up nice something cool so this hole right here is the combination of the hole that was over here and over here so if you've got this all lined up right front to back that should make a new hole those two halves should jo join and make a hole there which I'm gonna fill it in with weld but that's just pretty cool the corners were fitting a little too tight so I ground them down a little rounded them off and then I also cut a little bit out I took too much as you can see I should have just rounded this off and pretty much left that alone but oh well I uh, I'm gonna wait to weld those corners until I have the fish plate in behind here 
that way it'll it'll weld kind of onto that plate hopefully and make it even stronger see yeah I planned it that way so anyway this is totally flush this way this way this way but the the frame must taper a little bit because you can see it's just a touch wider right there like a quarter inch and at the top it is just a hair wider as well so I've checked it for square basically and for level I'm leveling everything off the top of the frame so you can see I've got about minus one degree there or 99 degrees whichever way you look at it not 99 you can see I'm just one tick under zero degrees right there and then if I put it right here also one tick under one degree the other side's a little more difficult because my clamp is in the way. This side's right at one degree. And I can't really get it on a flat spot there, so right there it's at zero. So it's within a degree. We'll do a little bit more. We'll do a little bit more fitting on this side. And I'll show you. I checked diagonal. To make sure we're square okay hopefully you can see this so from the rear cab cross member to the front frame cross member under the bed I have right at 17 and a 16th on this side and now my now my vice grips in the way but I had measured it for 17 17 and 1 16th both sides so that's square and then for a cross measurement what I did was this front bed bolt hole, the very back side of it because it's oval, to, I don't know if you can see me over there, but from there to this rear, the second to rear bed bolt hole, I have 59 inches going both ways. Let's see if I can get it. Hard to hook in that one. It just doesn't want to stay. Come on. Get her in there. Get her in there. Yep. So I have 59 inches from that corner bed bolt hole to the edge of my oval front bed bolt hole. Both sides. So 59 inches, 59 inches, 17 and a 16th, 17 and a 16th. And I'll show you this hole on the other side real quick too. I'll show you this hole on the other side real quick too. I don't remember if I did so. This hole as well, that is the combination of the front and back holes and it now makes one hole. It's kind of oval because I I ground these at an angle. So those come together and make a hole there. That's how you know you're living right with Jesus and got stuff lined up right. So let's start burning it in. I double checked my measurements and everything is good to go with the fitment on this side. So we're gonna throw a couple good tacks on it. Then we'll fiddle with some clamps on the other side and get some tacks on there and then we will burn it in. I kept turning my wire speed down a little bit because I have plenty of valley for the weld to lay in but it was kind of sticking up too much so I've got one top one there one there one there and one on the bottom gave me a little trouble so let's do the other side So this is our current state of affairs and things learned. The weld that was contaminated, I ground that all out and re-welded it. So that's all good to go. You can see I got a little frisky with the cutoff wheel and put a divot there in the frame where the weld was not. So I just tack welded that back in and I'll grind it smooth. I also learned that this weld on top can't stay there because I measured how wide the bed cross member is that bolts down right there and it would have interfered so you'll see both of these are ground flush now 
and since I ground that weld mostly away you can see the heat mark here now is because I welded it on the bottom so that is done and I've got the inside sprayed with weld through primer on both I made a sort of template out of cardboard for the fish plate on the inside and if you know why they're called a fish plate let me know down in the comments so I want it to cover both sides of the weld but I wanted to stay away from this divot in the frame right here that's like a stiffening rib you can see there's one on both sides of the leaf spring hanger I wanted to stay a little bit away from it and that's why the cut mimics that line so there and then the actual plates I made actually come out a little bit farther toward the front you can see the actual plates come out a little bit farther towards the front and they're also sprayed with weld through primer on the inside so here is the driver's side so it will go oh in there somewhat somewhat like that and I'll weld through those gaps there I'll plug weld the holes and then I will seam weld it on the outside or I guess on the inside rather around here so there you go driver passenger so we will get to welding those in she's all clamped up from the back side so here we go Kind of had to do a little more zigging and zagging than usual because of the odd shape of those holes, but not bad. I'll take it. So let's plug weld these two existing frame holes. you do is start at the outside of the hole all the way in where it meets the other panel and just circle around until it fills up and then pulling it out circling around until it fills up the middle it's about it for a plug weld on a thick piece like that We'll let that cool just a little bit and then we will weld up the inside. Okay, so the fish plates are welded in, plug welded from the outside. Having those little holes in the corners actually kind of worked out because I was able to tie all three pieces together right there. Plug welds. You can see the you can see the passenger side there and I've ground the edges all the mill scale and slag off of the plates. These are just some 3 16th plate that I had laying around. So we are going to burn them in from the inside. I'll probably skip around a little bit. I'll weld a couple on that side and then come over to this side and just kind of go back and forth. Okay. So here's the cab lifter 5000 in practice and my helpers. Roni's holding down the chair. Lovely wife. Okay, so now we're going to try this. Seems to be going well. I got a block in the back for some ballast. We're going to try to put that on there. Here is the welded reinforced frame before final cleanup. Ok. 
came out pretty good. Okay, well I think that's that's doable. idea. So for the next episode, we're going to show you the start of the Crown Vic swap on the front end, which is waiting in the wings right over there. As always, please like and share. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the end screen. We are still working our way up to 1,000 subscribers, and we're going to do a giveaway when we get there. So you're going to want to hit subscribe so you can see the new videos that come out. Next up, we're going to have some more T-Bird videos and some more 460 videos. Thanks for watching, stay tuned.